come to the point where families are feuding among themselves over political issues. Ministers fighting each other from the pulpit because of the dividing climate that it was politicizing of the church itself. These are times that we must understand that the most important thing is that the will of God be done. We should pray. Pray for this nation. Not only this nation, pray for the whole world. With a special emphasis on the household of Israel. But I'm saying to you that listen to me, those of you that are here, and possibly to those of you that are listening by in live stream. This is a very serious moment. Whether we realize it or not, this is one of the most perilous moments in this nation and the world since World War II, since the Great Depression preceded World War II. We need to pray. We pray that God's will be done. The important thing is that the will of God be done. His will exceeds every other will. It exceeds all power. The power to things to be pushing on our behalf that only God can perform. We don't look to political parties, political individuals, or any worthy contribution. Doesn't matter whatever it comes from to suffice our needs. Only God can. So I'm encouraging you, everybody to vote. It's important. But pray before you do so. There's things that only balance it really become very difficult to, to make decisions. So it's not just about the president and the vice president, the other issues as well. Uh, these issues impact neighborhood, impact lives, medical science, and you just name it, go right down the line in such a great manner. So it is important, very important, very, very, very important that we be very vigilant in the decisions we make and pray that we make the wise decisions in our selection of the areas that we're going to go on. But most important, I think, is the presidency and vice presidency of the United States of America. We understand God is not a political person. He doesn't have a Democratic Party. Neither does he have a Republican Party. He does have an independent party where God is almighty. And we want to trust him that he give us the things that we need. And again, one thing we definitely need is unity in this nation. Pray to God brings about. We don't want to go back to climates of religion, fighting on every hand. There's enough that's already in place that happens every day for another climate to excel the climate that, <laughs> that we've had over the many years. We get ready here today. We give God praise and glory and honor for the refuge of Global Ministries. Yes, we come to praise the Lord today. Can somebody shout hallelujah in the house somewhere? Can someone shout hallelujah? Can someone shout glory? Oh God, I preach. Lord, we thank God that God has blessed you in such a way that those over the past few weeks have been going to we bit going to bereavement. So many things are happening you know, to the family members and those that are connected to the family refuge. The Lord bereavement death is coming on every side. And that's one thing we cannot control. Well, let us pray for those that are lost loved ones. Pray for those who are sent miracles in our hearts, to those that need deliverance and dignity in their physical bodies. Let's pray to God for movement of life. 
And it's getting really fun. I used to waste my pivot. It began to feel from the cold. I was issued this time to give us a. And I had to wish Mother Darby she would come before she closed out the observation period. And Dr. Owens would come and deliver the word. And we'll make a prayer call from there. Come on, go ahead.
up on you. Praise God.
And we give honor to our pastor, his companion, to our first lady, too. We honor our ministers of the gospel and to those of you who are in the sanctuary today. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and we're glad to be in the house of the Lord once again in the name of Jesus. I want to invite you to turn with me to Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses 13 and 14. And it reads, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The 14th verse, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I want to speak this morning from the thought, the path to pain and promise. The path to pain and promise. We look at pain, we're talking about, we want to focus on the road of destruction. And when we look at promise, we want to highlight eternal life. I know many of you have heard, or you probably have perhaps read in the Word of God in the book of Second Timothy, the third chapter, it talks about that we're living in the last days, and these are perilous times. And we've heard that the end is drawing, has drawn near in Christ Jesus is coming back soon. We know that Christ, when he came the first time, he was coming as a lamb. But when he comes, return, he's going to come in judgment. So it behooves all of us to get right or we're going to be left behind. With these thoughts in mind, I, I believe that where you wind up depends on the road or the path that you take. In other words, you can't go south from the land and expect to end up in New York. Likewise, you can't even go east and think you will end up in the Mississippi River. It's undoubtedly impossible for you to do that. Just as it is in the physical sense, it is true in the spiritual realm. Where you wind up in eternity will determine the path that you take here while you are on earth. It's impossible to take the wrong road to go to heaven and it's impossible to go to the heavenly road to go to hell. What you do while you in this world will determine you, where you will spend eternity. We must all remember that Jesus set before every man two ways. One leads to eternal life and the other one leads to death. It is important that each one of us make the right choice concern, concerning our eternal destination. And setting the stage, we look at this particular passage of scripture that was authored by Matthew. He gives an account of Jesus Christ as he concludes on the Mount of Olives. In that fifth chapter, Jesus describes a series of choices to his listeners to make between the narrow way or the road of destruction. He also indicates that those who follow him should understand that choosing a difficult road from the worldly perspective is a path of life that leads to eternal life. 
In part, Jesus here, we see that he continues to teach of the, the Israel, the leaders that the scribes and the Pharisees had taught their legalistic views. And just like it was in the Bible, there's people who pretend to be religious and then do other things that are contrary to the word of God. For it's easy, and we see that a lot of hypocritical things are happening, even like it was in the biblical days. We see that even in our today's society. Many preachers get up and preach messages that make people feel good. Pat them on the back and you just do whatever you want to do. As long as you bring that money, it's all right with me. You hear that and don't even write it divide the word of God. Tell them what they want to hear. This is what's going on because why is that the road that lead to destruction? And unfortunately, the choice that people, many people make that will lead to this gate implies that something easy to see is easy to get through. It also suggests that accommodations one prefers, wide gates, gives us a choice of how to pass through than do the narrow ones. Since that lies on the other side, it is easier to go to the wide gate. This is sad because it implies that these people will eventually die and go to hell. But the alternative that's given in Matthew, the seventh chapter and the 14th verse is a path that requires more submission and leads to seemingly tougher experiences. But the end destination to this gate is eternal life. So we will talk about that later on in the message. This lesson today is relevant to today's church. So let us look further at the path to pain or the road that leads to the destruction that is found in verse 13. The text reads, at the straight gate. For wide is the gate that and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there which will be found therein. Here Jesus is talking about the eternal destiny of the wicked and the unsaved. Those who choose the road of destruction will surely die a painful death and burn forever. For we know that the wages of sin is death, and the soul that died, that sin shall, shall truly die. Matthew picks it up again in the 25th and 41st verse, and he said, Then shall he say unto them that on the left hand, Depart from me, ye curse unto everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Revelation 19 and 20, he talks about the beast was taken and with him the false prophet and that wrought miracles before him and which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and then them that worship his image these both were cast alive into the lake of burning fire and brimstone. And finally, in Revelation, the 20th chapter, the 15th verse warns us that those who are not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, those who are in the book of not found in the book will be cast into the lake of fire and burn forever and forever. Now let us take a look deeper look at the scripture and I want to bring out three points that talks about the wide gate. It is wide 
When we think about this gate, that those who are on the road of destruction may enter, it's easy to go through. It's easy. There is no rules, no standards, no revelations. There is no limit. There are plenty of room for sin. Whatever you want to do, you see those who are in this particular wide gate, they're self-righteous, pride. You see a lot of sexual immorality, hatred, liars, gamblers, you name it. All of the work of the flesh engaged in this wide gate. It's like Burger King. You can have it your way. That's why you see so many people in this wide gate. Some say, I don't want nobody to tell me what to do. I want to do my thing. I'm grown. I want to have it my way. Even some have the audacity to say, it don't take all that. I don't have to live a holy life. I don't have to uh, uh, comply to the word of God. God know my heart. These are the folk that are in this wide, this broad gate. Then we, then we see those who are in it is a wide, we said it's a wide gate, then it is a broad way. Broad means spacious, large, comfortable. It has no restrictions. Again, here it is, broad, the path that leads to least restriction. It's inclusive, open, tolerant. You can just do whatever you want to do. Worldly pleasures, the gate. It's broad. There's a wide opening. So you just come as you are. Do anything you big and bad enough that you want to do broad. Is this gate that will lead to destruction. And finally, it has many travelers, many, many, many travelers in this gate. It's heavily traveled. You see many people traveling in this gate is popular. It's popular. It's the preferred. You know that if you think about a concert, you let Beyonce or Jay-Z or whatever those worthy entertainers come to an arena. It's overly populated. But you let somebody call a revival. Amen. You can see. Look in the churches on Sunday morning. You got more people out of church than in church. If we look over our sanctuary, there are many people, there are many seats that are not occupied. But oh, let some entertainer, a football game, the arena, looking at Florida State and, 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 and the University of Miami playing. You see thousands of people. We need to understand that you in this broad way, you never know the world because why the world loves its own. And as Solomon puts it in Proverbs 16 and 25, that there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end there are are the ways of death. It may seem right. But you know, if you don't live according to what God has prescribed in the end, you will surely die. And then we see on the reverse side of it, we look into the scripture, Matthew that 14 verse says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Few. You're not going to have a lot of people in this narrow way. You're not going to have a lot of people willing to give up the world and take up the car their cross and follow Jesus Christ. In other words, the path 
or the road to promise lead to everlasting life in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus stresses this in both the verse 13 and 14 because we know that God wished that none shall perish and he has come that we may have a life. Jesus Christ does not want to see anybody perish, but the choice is simply up to every individual. Finally, I want to mention that it, is, it was a narrow gate, a narrow gate. Numbers, the 22nd chapter, the 26th verse states, and the angel of the Lord went further and stood in the narrow place where there was no way to turn either left or right. Narrow, small area. You don't have much room like the broad open space. It's, it's tight because you don't see many people walking in it. Here Jesus wants to emphasize the importance of that in the right way, in the narrow way, they impose restrictions to enter into the narrow way. There are boundaries. You gotta be saved, living holy, living Christian standards. So you gotta make sacrifices and that honor and please the Lord. If you wanna be in this narrow way, you can't walk any kind of way for John says in the 10th verse in the 9th 10th chapter in the 9th verse that I am the door. If you're going to be in this narrow way you got to go through the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastors. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if you're going to enter into this narrow way, there's no other name that man shall be saved at the name of Jesus, but the name of Jesus. You gotta enter and through this door and God has prescribed a recipe that one has to adhere to if you want to be saved and want to make heaven your home. You got to have it God's way or no way at all. So here we clearly see that the path of promise or eternal life is exclusive. Unlike the path of pain, which is inclusive. So yeah, 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 you can't just in this narrow way. It's going to take some suffering that you're going to have to go through. And even the apostle Peter proclaimed in Acts, the fourth chapter, in the 12th verse, he said, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You got to come through the name of Jesus. Salvation come through that name. If somebody come preaching anything else, don't accept that it comes through that name. This brings me to my second point about the path to promise. It is a difficult way. Somebody said that nobody told me that the road would be easy. It's a difficult way. You're going to have to make some sacrifices. You're going to have to go through something. Every day not going to be sunny. But God said, no, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Jesus is saying in this verse that the narrow way leads to life. And few there be will find it. We have already established that Eternal life is difficult because it is a restricted way. 
a restricted way. No, 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 no. <laughs> Believe it. You can't have it your way. You can't have it your way. Let that set. If you want to walk in this narrow way, you cannot have it your way. I can't have it my way. God has a standard and that he requires that we be obedient to his word. We see here in at the 14th chapter, verses 21 and 22, even the apostles told that the difficulty of the choosing to walk in the narrow way. When they preached the gospel to that city, they told men in return again to Lystra, Akoyim, and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exalting them to continue in the faith that they must go through much tribulation in order to enter into the kingdom of God. So it's relevant today as saints of God, as people of God, we're going to be tested, we're going to be tried on every side, but we got to stay with the Lord. We got to believe that God can take us through and God will take us through. Yes, there are many benefits in serving the Lord. But as I said earlier, on the other hand, there are many heartaches, there are many hardships, there are many trials and tribulations that the people of God must endure. No wonder why there are few who have chose to travel down the narrow way. Because folk, some people don't want to go through anything. They can't take it. They just decide to go the broad way. I'm just going to have my fun. I'm not ready. I don't want to go through anything. Just let me live and have a good time. Some people believe that let the good time roll, but I'm here to tell you that after the judgment, after you die, there is a judgment. And you need to understand that you just can't do what you want to do. And then finally, thirdly, it has few travels. Like Jesus and his followers were considered the minority. Today's God's people, we consider the minority. We must understand that we are a part of a small group. And because we are the minority, don't mean that we are wrong. We are right. Because we got the truth. Amen. And they are the ones that are wrong. So don't get it twisted. Understand that we are right. Amen. And Jesus said, for many are called, but few are chosen. So those of us who are on the path to promise should be thanking God. Amen. For the truth. That we have salvation and thanking him for his grace, for his mercy that he has shown toward us. The path of pain and promise. So in conclusion, so, so it's a, in conclusion I want to share with you a thought that's taken from a poem that was written by Robert Frost entitled The Road Not Taken. Frost writes, two roads diverge in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled. And that was, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverge into the wood. And I, took the one less trouble and that has made all the difference. So the challenge for all of us to think about, for those of you who are in Radio Land, who are in the Valley of Decision, where will you end up? Will you take the wide or will you take the narrow way? 
For the choice is yours. Jesus will not force you to do anything. For he wants those that whoever so ever will, let him come. The choice is yours. In other words, when you die, do you want to go to heaven or do you want to go to hell? The path depends on you. But I recommend the narrow way. I recommend the narrow way. If you haven't made God your choice, I re recommend, I offer to you Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins in according, amen, to Acts 2.38. Psalm says, uh, I decided to make Jesus my choice. The road gets rough. The going gets tough. Sometimes the hills get hard to climb. But I decided this morning, hallelujah, to make Jesus my choice. For God is a good God. The Lord is all you need. Hallelujah. Jesus paid the price. He paid a debt he did not owe. He owed that we owe a debt that we cannot pay. And so I invite you this morning to choose this day. Choose this day who you will serve. Because as we indicated early on that time is running and winding up. The sun, hallelujah, is going down. And you don't want the sun to go down. in the name. 